Hi, my name is Taylor Hathaway, and I will be presenting on the sympathetic response of laryngoscopy and endotracheal intubation. Now, during intubation, a whole bunch of nerves get stimulated, and these nerves send signals that increase the heart rate, that increase the systemic vascular resistance, and can increase the intracranial pressure. Now, we care about this because we want our patients to be hemodynamically stable, especially the patients with cardiovascular disease or patients with intracranial pathologies like aneurysms, AVMs, or mass lesions, because acute changes in pressure uh, are not compensated well in the brain or in the heart. Now, by treating this, we reduce the risk of ischemia, we reduce the risk of arrhythmias and of ruptures. So the autonomic pathway starts with the afferent innervation, which of the nasopharynx is the maxillary nerve, or V2. Of the pharynx and posterior third of the tongue, it's innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. And in the larynx, we have the superior laryngeal nerves and we have the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The efferent side is primarily driven by the sympathetic chain ganglia, which releases norepinephrine and adrenergic nerve terminals. Some of these terminals are in the juxtaglomerular cells, they release renin, which contributes to increase in blood pressure. Um, you also have vagal efferents to the glottis, which can contribute to laryngospasm. And then you have the systemic vasoconstriction that results from the norepinephrine release that uh, acts on the alpha receptors on arterioles. Now, in children, you can also see a sinus bradycardia from parasympathetic innervation in the SA node. Now, pharmacologically, we can treat this a few ways. We can treat it with deeper anesthesia, we can treat it with opioids, lidocaine, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers. The ideal drug has a rapid onset of action and a short duration of action because we only need it for this initial intubation. Thank you for listening.